If you've ever felt intimidated by the thought of building a chair, then you're not alone. Most people are, including myself. So when my wife asked me to build her a set of dining chairs, I immediately thought of the Sam Maloof style I'd fallen in love with years earlier. But before I could tackle such a daunting project, I figured a stool was a better, simpler way to get started in the chair building. The project I chose was a guitar stool designed by Paul Lemsky from Canadian Woodworks, built in the Sam Maloof style. So not only are you learning new joinery methods, but you get to power carve your stool into submission, creating a custom heirloom piece that will outlast the generations. I'll link Paul's plans in the description below. After cutting the blanks for the legs and seat out of 8 quarter walnut, I ran them through the jointer to make a flat gluing surface, then glued up the blanks. Sam Maloof is America's best known self-taught woodworker. His contemporary furniture is instantly recognizable. Sadly, Sam died in 2009 at the age of 93, but Sam's chairs for which he is perhaps most famous live on. They can be characterized by completely rounded over corners of mortise and tenon joints which are always plainly visible. I left them to dry overnight and then the next morning scraped the glue off. Using the template I made from the plan, I traced out the seat and marked the three leg locations. Before making this stool, I never realized just how much wood you actually waste building a chair. I guess that's the difference between making round objects compared to my usual square stuff. I used the table saw sled to achieve a perfectly square face to create the mortises. And cut a series of biscuit slots in each of the mortises and then remove the extra waste with a chisel. followed by routing out the mortises with a half inch down spiral bit to clean up the mortise slots using a homemade jig. Over to the shaper table, I set up a half inch rabbiting bit, just slightly lower than the tabletop to make the unique Maloof mortise slot. Now to be honest, this was a bit nerve-wracking, as I wasn't sure if the router bit was going to rip the seat to pieces, but thankfully it all went well. A quick measure with the calipers, and then trim off the legs to match the slot. Tracing around the leg template on each of the leg blanks and extended the back angle line, then trimmed to the line using a table sled. Finishing up the cut with my trusty number no. 4 Stanley hand plane. I mark the location around the sides of the legs where the slots go. Then load the dado stack in the table saw to cut the slots. Using this handy dandy height adjuster thingy, I set the blade height to half an inch and make some test cuts using the mini dado sled to get the height dialed in. It's really important to take your time here if you cut the slots too loose, the legs won't fit snugly. And um, ask me how I know that. 
After test fitting, I move over to the shaper table to round over the inside corners of the joints using a 3 quarter inch round over bit. From the foot of each leg, I measure 5 eighths either side of the center line, drawing a line up the leg to the shoulder joint and then trim away the excess. As I exit the cut, I tip up the leg so as I can keep the cut parallel to the joint. Using the Festool 90, I use 40 grit paper to smooth the bandsaw marks. I think on my next go around, I'll try a spoke shave and see if that will shave off any time from the build. Sorry, couldn't resist that one. The legs are looking pretty good and I continue sanding them up to 150 grit. Back at the shaper table, using my not so donut shaped jig, I'm rounding over the lower part of the legs, this time using a 5 8 round over bit. And now for my favorite part of the project, final assembly and glue up time. And if I do say so myself, this is starting to look pretty darn good. And that reminds me, I need to get some more Bessie clamps. The more clamps, the merrier. and I'm giving it time to dry overnight before removing the clamps. Now the real fun begins. Bring on the power carving. Power carving down the top of the leg stumps is great fun. However, sawing off the tops helps me see the final stool quicker. Then I get back to the business of carving the stool using a coarse cut saw disc. And here's my daughter's cat, Fred. To lend a paw. So thoughtful. <laughs> Fred and I are sharing a Zen carving moment. Fred basically has no idea what the heck it is I'm doing, and neither do I, but we're having fun doing it. I brought out this cool mini cut saw bit that grinds the transitions between the legs and the underside of the stool. In keeping in the spirit of an English craftsman, it's time for the tea break and to try out my new stool. Hmm, quite comfy really. Taking the stool back inside for the final sanding, I'm using the Festool Rotex 90 again. While this is a fantastic tool, the Rotex 150 would have been better in this situation. But that's all I've got, so that's what I'm gonna use. Starting with 40 grit paper makes this relatively quick work, moving through all the grits up to 180 grit. And then the final hand sand to get any of the bits I may have missed and smooth out the bumps. A quick blow with the air compressor to remove any dust. Then it's on to the finishing with Rubio Monocoat Pure. Simply mix it at a ratio of three parts finish to one part accelerator. This is the first time I've used the Rubio Pure and I have to say I'm seriously impressed at how easy this stuff is to apply and how little of it is required to get an amazing result. This almost makes finishing fun. You just spread it on, wait five minutes and wipe it off. How much easier could that be? The good people over at Rubio say, after applying the finish, you can't take enough off. 
So keep wiping it off until you get no more on your cloth. Hang on, I just made a rhyme. Cloth off, okay, cool. Building my first Maloof style piece has taken me out of my comfort zone and I've enjoyed the process immensely. And now I have the confidence I need to build the Maloof style dining chairs for my sweet wife. Thanks for watching.